Welcome to Brand New Mandela Effects. This might be episode 29, but don't worry, each episode is self-contained, so you don't need to watch them in any order. You aren't late, you're right on time. If you don't know already what a Mandela Effect is, or you need a quick refresher, a Mandela Effect is a phenomenon where a large group of people remember something differently than it is now. It's a simple enough concept that can go off the rails real fast, as you'll see in this video. Just remember that every Mandela Effect isn't going to affect everyone. Sometimes only one will blow your mind, and other times every single one of them will. We don't yet know why this is, but that's the fun of it. Timestamps for all of these are in the description below if you want to skip around. So like the video, subscribe now, make sure you click that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Let's get into it. Let's talk about a classic guitar brand founded in 1890 that is known all over the world. How is it spelled? Squire or Squire? Anyone out there who has owned a guitar or a first time amp has seen this before. So what do you remember? Both sound the same, but it turns out that the spelling of Squire is actually this one. That's the correct spelling. This Mandela effect has been extremely popular lately as it's affected so many people online. Are you one of those affected? Or have you always known that Squire was spelled like this? I've tested this on a bunch of different friends and every single one of them has gotten it wrong, which is pretty rare for a Mandela effect. Usually it'll be 40-60 or 60-40, sometimes 50-50, but this one, from what I've seen online, as well as everyone I've talked to, I'm clocking at 100% for this one, which is pretty compelling. So I'd love to hear what you think. Here's a new one that I'm still wrapping my head around. Growing up, you've probably learned that a straight line is the shortest distance between two points, right? Or some variation of that, like a line is the shortest distance between two points. Does that sound familiar to you? Because if it does, you're about to be interested in this. That's correct if it's a straight line, but it all depends on the geometry of the object in question. For example, if my country, the United States of America was completely flat, then yes, a straight line would be the shortest and fastest distance between two points. But Earth is a sphere, which means that the shortest distance between two points is actually an arc, known as the Great Circle Distance. This might seem like it's getting complicated, but stick with me, it'll all make sense. This Great Circle Distance, or curve, is actually the shortest distance between two points. This concept isn't new, it's always been known about, and nearly all methods of distance transportation use this. Planes, boats, and yes, even sometimes traveling in a car when the roads allow for it. This one blew me away. All of those flat physical maps we saw and read growing up didn't account for the curvature of the globe and as such, a straight line is no longer the shortest distance. It simply isn't. Take for example, New York City to Paris. You'd think a straight line would be the shortest route, coming in at about 3,743 miles. But actually, it's the Great Circle distance, which is shorter, coming in at 3,626 miles. The curved line beats out the straight line. It may look longer to us, but it is in fact somehow both shorter and faster on a sphere. I don't know about you, but this is mind-blowing stuff to me. That phrase that so many of us heard growing up in relation to geography or movement on this earth is simply not true. I wasn't really sure if I was going to include this one, but it's tested really well against the people that I've asked in real life and online, so I'll let you decide. Do you think this is an example of the Mandela Effect? as in a group of people remembering things differently compared to the way that they are now? Or has this always been the case and a ton of people simply remembered the exact same thing incorrectly for all these years? Here's a fun and quick older Mandela effect that I've never talked about on this channel, just in time for Turkey Day. Do you remember Kraft Stovetop Stuffing? Or was it Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing? Which do you remember? Get this, it has apparently always been Kraft. Imagine going to the store to buy some of the stovetop stuffing, only to find out that the brands you're looking for not only don't exist, but have never, ever existed. And that brand, Stouffer's, has never actually made stovetop stuffing before. For all the people that remember Stouffer's, I don't know what to tell you. And for Thanksgiving this year, if you celebrate it, unfortunately, Kraft is your only option. These food Mandela effects, I swear, it's so confusing. Remember the movie Spider-Man 2, where Spider-Man stops a train from derailing and crashing, using every ounce of strength in his body? All of this happened after an incredible battle with Doc Ock. Spider-Man was exhausted, beaten down, and completely worn out, but he gave it his all and he saved the people on that train. Then those same people saved the collapsing Spider-Man. The people that saved him slowly pulled him inside to safety. They all carried him above their heads and then laid him down. Someone saying, careful, he's a hero. Someone else chimes in. 
He's just a kid. No older than my son. It's an amazing moment where Spider-Man wakes up to everyone staring at him. He realizes his mask is gone and everyone knows what his face looks like. But everyone promises to keep it a secret. It's just, mwah, chef's kiss. That's a superhero moment right there. This is what makes those kinds of movies so good. So besides reminiscing about this incredible movie, something I just said didn't actually happen. And that's the new Mandela effect I'm discussing today. Despite what a lot of people remember, myself included, the line, careful, he's a hero, was never said in Spider-Man 2. It simply doesn't exist. The line where someone says, careful, he's a hero, is now replaced with, nice and easy, mumble, mumble, slower, gently. It's actually really strange sounding compared to the rest of the dialogue during the scene. It sounds like dialogue added after the fact in post-production. Like the original line was removed and replaced with this, whatever this mumbly line is. Nice and easy to go down. Slower, gently. I had to remove the music and background noise just to hear what the current line actually is. Listen for yourself. Nice and easy to go down. Slower, gently. It's something like nice and easy when you go down or nice and easily you go down, you can barely understand it, and that's not what I remember. I even looked up the script, and none of the dialogue is in it. It just vaguely describes what happens. I got really into this mystery when I first heard of it, because I can quote most of this movie. That's how much I've watched Spider-Man 2. So I started digging. It's not in Spider-Man 2. It's not in the slightly longer version of Spider-Man 2.1, or Spider-Man 3. So what happened to this line? Eventually I found something on a website that catalogs memes, one of those memes is this, carefully, he's a hero. This meme started around 2017, while the original movie came out in 2004. Now here's the weird thing, I've never seen these memes before, but the line is near identical to what I remember. Mine being careful, he's a hero, and the meme being carefully, he's a hero. The fact we both came to a near identical remembrance of this line is pretty stunning, meaning either it's a complete coincidence, as in both of our minds came to the same false memory. Or, maybe it was a line in one version of Spider-Man 2 that doesn't exist anymore and can't be found. Or, it's a Mandela effect of something that used to exist that a bunch of people remember, but doesn't anymore. Stuff like this just makes me scratch my head. What do you remember? Does this line sound familiar to you? Have you ever seen these memes before? Let me know what you remember. Next up is Shazam, the 1994 genie movie that never existed. Tons of people remember it existing, myself included, but apparently it didn't. What did exist though was Kazam, a 1996 movie starring Shaquille O'Neal. Today I have an interesting update for you regarding this mystery. I found a Rolling Stone article about Shaq from 1993. It goes into his life about what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, but one interesting detail stood out to me. It said that after a long day, Shaq is content to hang around his house, playing video games, and romping with his dog, a Rottweiler named Shazam which Shaq is trained to respond to commands in a language only the dog and Shaq understand. It's almost like a made-up fantasy kind of language. He'll say a weird, nonsensical word and the dog will do something like sit or fetch, you get the gist. Put simply, years before Shaq was in Kazam, around the time when everyone remembers the movie Shazam releasing, Shaq had a dog named Shazam. What makes this even weirder is that his dog's name's spelling contained two A's at the end of it, which Shazam from DC does not, but the Shazam movie with Sinbad that so many people seemingly remember does have two A's at the end of it. Nothing groundbreaking here, but it's pretty weird. Kazam had a dog named Shazam years before Kazam was made, spelled like the movie Shazam that never existed. Such an interesting coincidence. I'm gonna have a link to this article in the description if you wanna go check it out for yourself. I just found this strange. What do you think? Let's jump across the pond to the United Kingdom. People always ask me for more foreign Mandela effects, which is typically hard to do because the verification process is that much harder. I don't have people I can just ask. But in this case, the evidence is overwhelming. So let's talk about potato chips, or as they like to call them, crisps. Specifically, Walker's Crisps. There is a long established brand of chips over there called Walker's Crisps. Specifically, a salt and vinegar variation in a green package and a cheese and onion variation in a blue package. That's how they are sold to this day, but the vast majority of people believe those colors and flavors switched around. What so many seem to remember is salt and vinegar in blue and cheese and onion in green. It sounds weird at first, but this has become a pretty big deal. This would be the American equivalent of the Doritos red and blue bags switching flavors and colors. It's totally strange and obviously wrong. Not only that, 
there are countless personal experiences of people talking about these chips and the color switch. Here's some examples. And no, I'm not going to use a British accent. Used to buy the blue salt and vinegar's walkers religiously because salt and vinegar is my jam. One day I opened up a blue pack, took a bite, and it was cheese and onion. 44 years old from the UK. I too vividly remember this color swap. This is beyond freaky. I have a specific memory of buying a pack of Walker's crisps in a vending machine as a youngster, and without thinking, I picked the green ones as I love cheese and onion. I was devastated when I got salt and vinegar. The quotes go on and on and on. People remember these colors being flipped. So what does the company behind them say? Couldn't it simply be that the colors were flipped at one point and that's the explanation? Case closed? Well, Vice did an entire article on this crazy mystery called The Walker's Crisps Conspiracy that has people convinced we're in an alternate reality. That's a mouthful of a title, geez. In this article, they delve deep into the mystery and show off this incredible gaslighting FAQ section of the Walker's website. Question, why did you change your packaging for salt and vinegar and cheese and onion so they're in the wrong colors? Answer, contrary to popular belief, Walker's cheese and onion have always been in blue packets and salt and vinegar have always been in green packets. We don't have a plan to change this as it's signature to our brand. Undeterred by this response, the writer of this article actually tracked down a longtime Walker's representative. And this representative actually remembers there being a switch, but can't remember when it was, and can't find anything about it, just like everyone else. Like you can't make this stuff up. Even the chip representative remembers them switching, but the company denies it? So then people turn to Google and other search engines, and guess what? There's no evidence of the color switch. Tons of people talking about it online, but no proof or residue. The author of this article even reached out to Google, and Google denies ever changing or deleting anything relating to Walker's crisps. There have even been multiple polls done regarding these chips, and like I said earlier, the majority of people believe a switch happened. But Walker's crisps denies it, and there is no evidence that it ever happened outside of the thousands and thousands of recorded memories. What do you think?